Why hello there and welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show episode number 364 with me your host Agostino Zynga. How you doing? How you feeling? Great. Amazing. How am I? Pretty good. Got my little mug of tea here on my right hand staring at you guys wherever you may be so I'm feeling nice and dandy. If it's your first time watching the show please make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe and leave me a comment down below. If you're listening via the podcast app, please leave me a five-star review and share the show with your friends. The more you share, the more people get in touch, the more people get in touch, the more it spreads, the more it spreads, the better the show gets. And if you want to support the show as well on Patreon, please do via the link down below. Um, what I'm currently doing with Patreon at the moment is that I'm turning this entire podcast into an audio podcast i'm also recording the audio track as well as the video you're watching on youtube and i upload the audio version of the podcast in full a couple of days ahead of posting it on all the other platforms such as youtube and spotify and apple Podcasts. So if you want to hear the entire podcast ahead of time and you want to support the show also or you just want to support it anyway and throw me some shekels then please um click the link down below on patreon that's patreon.com for just agostino that's patreon.com for just agostino should be in the description down below click that link and for as little as one dollar a month you can support the show you can get access to my entire audio library as well as access to this show you're listening to right now a couple of days ahead of everybody else listening to it so if you want to hear stuff right when it comes out make sure you support on patreon for as little as one dollar it's available on there one dollar and an equivalent of like one pound 20 if you're in the uk so definitely check out the link down below patreon.com for us a-g-o-s-t-i-n-h-o it should be the pinned comment on youtube and it should be via the section the description section on your podcast app so definitely make sure you check that out on patreon so um how you guys been doing all right good nice how's your bank holiday weekend get up to anything nothing special um we were what what was it bank holiday weekend in the uk is meant to be carnival weekend right so of course there was no carnival due to covid um which is a bit of a freak incident, i guess because you know carnival hasn't i don't think carnival's ever been cancelled due to something happening in the world <laughs> sorry bless me um yeah, I don't think anything carnival's ever been cancelled. I doubt it. Um, it might have been postponed. Which, it, yeah, which I think they could say it's been postponed now, but it hasn't specifically been cancelled. But it might have been postponed or it might have been pushed back a couple of days. But I think that's it. Oh, Jesus. I'm sneezing like a judge. Apologies. Um, But yeah, carnival has never been cancelled. I don't think for the most part. So this is a bit of a freak incident. And they tried to do one of those... um live stream show things right to get people hyped on carnival i didn't watch it of course because you know no one I, I don't know i don't mind watching like a live stream of somebody talking on a podcast or like a live stream of a panel discussion or something but when someone tries to like give me this sort of like manufactured fun and tries to make a party um live stream a party it just doesn't work out i've had to think actually I'm, I'm, i've had to think and i was thinking to myself you know what when clubs are reopen, I wonder if there'll be a segment of DJs who will start streaming their sets, depending on if the promoter and the club permits, right? Some clubs obviously won't allow you. I'm looking at most of the Berlin places. They're a bit finicky about cameras and phones. But if you're able to go somewhere and just just even maybe just record the audio track, you don't even have to have the video because maybe that's a bit intrusive, right? Just have the audio streamed via whatever platform that you're using, Twitch, YouTube, whatever. And whilst the clubs are reopened because i'm sure there's going to be a segment of the population who are going to be like you know what i'm not comfortable going out just yet and they're going to want to stay indoors but they're also going to want to know and kind of be a bit they're going to be a bit vo voyeuristic right they're going to want to kind of have an idea of what's going on out there and kind of feel like they're there when they're not there it's all like the opposite of fomo because you'll get access to it i wonder if that'll be a thing going forward i can imagine it being a thing i can imagine a couple of clubs trialing it because if you built a bit of a streaming infrastructure now you know to kind of keep your head above water why not just kind of roll it out for everybody else that wants to use it right especially if you're a dj and you don't mind and you have like a bit of a social media presence and you're plugged in that way it could be a pretty good option to go forward in it um you could also maybe i don't know do sh not shout outs but you could also kind of use this opportunity to maybe give people underground artists an idea of how they tune 
um, kind of um, how it works in the club. Maybe that's a way. Maybe some it's, it'll be a good way to kind of get some feedback on how your tune works. Maybe you send a promo, a demo to an artist, and then they're playing it live. You hear it, you clip it, you put it in your feed. Then you can use that as a bit of content. I don't know. I I, I wonder if that'll be a thing going forward, or if it'll just be like as soon as the clubs reopen, everyone just dashes their GoPros in the bin and just starts raving. Because of course, you know the last thing you want to do when you're in a club is probably have your GoPro strapped to your head in it because you're going to be getting up to all sorts of nonsense. So I don't know. Maybe if that's a thing maybe it might not be a thing i'd curious to see what's going to happen going forward but um yeah no carnival they did a little live stream thing i didn't listen i didn't check it out but i'm sure some people did um carnival's one of those things you just have to experience it you know you can't really carnival's weird because in the uk because even when um they have these big sponsors and i think for the longest time in the uk part of the kind of the in ticket to get before i kind of got plugged in because i came to carnival late in life really I think most 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 of the reason why because you know my parents didn't let, really let me go at the time when I was younger so at the time when I kind of got a bit older and I was you know my own man quote unquote I was finally allowed to go to the Notting Hill Carnival and when I first got introduced to it I got introduced to it via the whole streetwear fashion crew and they have a very weird way of enjoying themselves right I think if you've ever been around people that are involved in fashion I think any kind of subculture really I'd assume any kind of subculture right especially when you get involved in the people especially when you're friends with people who are kind of quote unquote um who are quote unquote the taste not taste makers who are the ones who are like working in the industry right anyone i'm assuming the same thing in the engineering field right the moment you kind of cross over from being a fan of these people and you start hanging out with the people that are actually making these engine these products that you're infatuated by in the engineering field their sense of fun is different to what your sense of fun is, right? They tend to be a little bit more like, you know, there's always talk about what's going on, gossip about he said this, this that person did that thing, and just a bit of a dead vibe. And even though you get flown out to different places and you get a press pass and you get to go to these industry events, they're a bit sterile, right? Because they're mostly just occasions for people to network or people to show off new features, to boast about promotions. You know, it's ne- it's not necessarily a fan thing. It's kind of my whole adage where I say like, you know how people are obsessed with going to festivals and standing on a side and watching people? I think that's a dead experience. And if I had a backstage pass, most of the reason why I'd like to get one is so I can maybe bump into somebody I like behind the stage, right? Quote unquote backstage and like get talking. But then most of the fun I'd have is just being in the crowd or having that section at the front of the stage, right? Where you can maybe mosh on your own and not have everyone stepping on your trainers. But part of the reason I want to actually see the set. And I think Tyler was only the only kind of artist that's kind of changed that. Right when he goes to festivals, he definitely tries to stand in the photo pit where all the photographers are. Instead of standing on the stage where everyone else does, which they think you know is being cool, but being just a carnival that way via the kind of fashion crew, you tend to kind of um, want the hot ticket um, thing entry, which is going to the Red Bull uh, stage, right where they have this like Red Bull section where essentially it's free drinks. Um, at one time I went, it was free food as well, but it's a very corporate version of not an ill carnival don't get me wrong it's still pretty good they still get really good djs in um you, it's, it's still a bit of a vibe because you have to kind of cut through it, actual carnival to get to the red bull section it's still a it's still a thing right um it's still finding what it is but it's not carnival and it doesn't really do anything right it's not really what you want to go there for and then one year when i stayed at home and tried to watch it via boiler room it was still fun don't get me wrong because boiler room did a great job covering it some great camera angles everyone was showing out and i think by and large the uk crowd that when it comes to carnival time just you know they really let loose they're comfortable with cameras and not you know they're kind of showing off their new dance move new outfits getting really on it and it's just it provides like a, a bit of fun viewing for you as a view in public but again it's not the same as going so to try and stream this, especially during this time, especially with the current, you know, climate of people thinking, hey, this virus thing is affecting uh, black and brown people disproportionately. It just doesn't seem like the best thing to do. But again, I understand, you know, you need to occupy people's time, you need to pe- maybe take people's mind away from what's going on. But I just didn't think it was maybe the smartest thing or the best way to kind of... Um, um i don't know to remind people of what they missed it just was it just didn't seem like a thing that i'd want to watch really do you know what i mean it would make me it would make me miss carnival more than i actually do miss it because you know i haven't been for what maybe two to three years i haven't been and um mostly because you know you just kind of get over it it's a bit of a young man's game over at carnival anyway in general especially unless you go on a sunday or something but 
I'm never really that. You know what I mean? And then watching that would just make me think, God damn it. And, or actually, just going through this year has made me think, you know what? All those things that I'm kind of like um, over or I'm a bit snotty about and, you know, oh, I'm over this thing. I don't want to go anymore. Now, suddenly, as soon as stuff opens up again, I'm there. You know what I mean? Yeah, whether it's like a naff night at Coco's or some dead out rave somewhere in the middle of shortage, I'm going. Do you know what I mean? As soon as stuff opening up, just to be like, you know what? I did it. I did it once it opened up because I think when stuff was opened, you took stuff for granted, I think. Well, in my experience anyway, I know I did. I definitely took stuff for granted. I'm not sure about you guys or if you'd ever admit that, but I know I did. I know I did. But yeah, that was about it. Maybe my weekend, um, did a lot of running, did a lot of gym work, stayed in for the most part, watched a couple of movies. What did I watch? I mentioned Gravity before. What did I watch this weekend? That was memorable. I w- rewatched the original Taken. That was good. I mentioned that before, actually. What did I watch this weekend? I didn't watch Taken. I didn't watch that. There was a space film, Gravity. I watched. Oh, I, I rewatched season one of Fargo excellent tv um again it just goes to show you just how far that show fell off i don't know who's to blame if it's the writers if it's the showrunners or showrunners writers if it's the production company if it's just you know you just ran out of inspiration but that show was incredible man season one of fargo was so bloody good so many good performances um you know probably one of the best villains on tv as well do you know what i mean that season one like i really recommend you check that out and that was about it man spent most of my time indoors nothing else was going on really same old same old vibe in it what can you do but anyway hope you guys are well wherever you are as per usual um grab your favorite drink um get, get yourself something to eat strap on in we've got a jam-packed show loads of interesting bits and pieces to cover that happened during the weekend i guess so <laughs> across the internet loads of interesting news loads of interesting developments um action-packed show loads of stuff to cover so get on in tune in let's go news number one funny news um supposedly some kid in taiwan got tangled up in a kite um and got swung around it looks like via his neck i'm not sure if it was actually his neck but whatever it is whatever part of his body it is he must be thankful he still has that body that part of his body that part of his yeah that limb attached to his body he should be thankful of it because jesus this looks scary um it looks scary and it's also very questionable as to why all the adults in the vicinity are just video recording the thing and not offering any kind of assistance now don't get me wrong it is a kid stuck in a kite there's not much more you can do right you kind of have to hope he just comes down eventually but the amount of video cameras are just like you know marveling at the sight of this little kid just being you know swung from pillar to post quite literally is really really hilarious and then i'll play it for you now <laughs> God Almighty. Now, I'm not too sure if it's got... I'm not sure if it's attached to his neck or if it was attached to his arm. Because I think someone mentioned it might have been his arm, but I don't think so. Because I think of his arm, he would have dropped ages ago. But it was definitely his neck. And it's just God Almighty, man. I guess the good thing is that most likely, you know, there's going to be somebody in the, in that vicinity, especially if you're in a, in a Far East country, there's going to be somebody that is, you know, has some sort of a uh, medical experience that can um, render some help. Because if that was anywhere else, you know, maybe a little a place maybe less affluent, there'd be some real problems. Right? <laughs> But kids are a madness, isn't it, right? Kids are a madness. You take your eye off them for one second and suddenly they're literally, I don't know, what is that? 10, 15 feet in the air getting swung around by a kite on a day out? Like, you, you can't really blame the parents, I don't think, on stuff like this, can you? Can you blame the parents? What did they do wrong? I don't see what the figures are. Literally, he could have just been eating his little candy floss. The, the mum turned around for one second to say hi to Aunt Jane across the way and then turned back around and the kids... The kids' feet are up in the air, like nuts. Absolutely nuts. Look how high he is. That is insane. You know what makes me laugh? The screams always make me laugh in this sort of thing. You always hear women screaming in the back. I think it's just a natural reaction for some women just to scream as if that's going to somehow kind of, you know, um, do anything that's going to kind of resolve the situation there's also screams 
high pitch, low pitch, however, like if he starts swinging low, they scream more, he strings high, they scream a bit um, lower. It's just a very, very bizarre way to deal with the situations with this. Again, what can you do in it? You can't get some kid to just what, climb up a tree and acrobatically try and pull him down to the ground. That's not going to work either. Fucking, you know, it kind of reminds me of it's that video of that old, um, who's that lady that I was trekking somewhere in the middle of the desert and she gets injured somehow. Helicopter comes to try and pick her up. They put her on, <laughs> they put her on one of those bed things to kind of hoist her to a, an hospital, you know, to take her somewhere to get more medical attention. And somehow she starts spinning out. And I think she passes out like seven or eight times or something. And she, it's gruesome because you find out the lady's like, I don't know, you know, she's probably an old age pensioner, maybe over the age of 60. And she's already injured, you know, for the first place. And she just starts spinning. And luckily this didn't happen to this kid because I think, you know, if he would have spun anymore, he definitely would have got choked out. And again, I don't know in the video if it's actually been attached to his, his neck or if it's just his arm. But that is nuts, isn't it? He's absolutely being swung around like... That kind of reminds you know it's, it's not the first time you go on a roller coaster and you have that moment where you just like your eyes kind of roll back to your roll back into your skull and you start thinking oh i'm gonna faint and then boom you're out you wake up again and you're at you literally towards the end of the roller coaster and again it did happen to me but it does happen to some people that is so scary man <laughs> Everyone's just casually walking up like nothing's going on. But it's also, you know what? It's also nice to see that some countries are reopened where they've actually had the possibility to have kids get, you know, dragged from pillar to post out there. Because, you know, countries like um, the ones that I'm in at the moment, that's not even, that's never going to happen. And I think there's a final angle of this. This is what I think this shows at the start of it, maybe. So this kite is pretty big. It's a pretty big kite. It's on a windy day. I'm assuming they plan for this right windy day in taiwan get all the kites out get the family out day family day out with kites and shit um this is maybe is this equivalent to like is this irresponsible levels is this equivalent to like taking your kid to a fireworks exhibition like a local one in the park because obviously it's cool for your kid to see but there's also the you know the possibility that they could get hit in the head or you know their eye could get you know blown out of their blown out of their face via watching a couple of rockets go off in their local park but I'm sure this this was like a fairly professional operation. But look at the kid at the back. <laughs> the kid just goes flying. Look how high he is. Oh my god. Oddly enough, though, kids are so robust at that age. If he would have dropped, would he have really broken anything? Probably would have got a bit, a couple of bruises. Kids that age are just, you know, they're made out of rubber, innit? But still, this is horrifying, bro. Just imagine the parents. They actually turned your back for... It's that common saying, innit? You can't turn your back on kids for two seconds. This is proof of it. This and that video of that kid that climbed out of his um window and was on the balcony hanging off of it. <laughs> That is insane. That is insane. Oh my god, look how high he is. But I'm sure someone's control why couldn't they just bring him down quicker? But oh, I'm assuming that's maybe that's you can control the front bit and then the whatever the tail section is, that's just the one that makes all the that's what causes all the kind of um that's the entertainment section, I'm assuming, of the kite, right? The bit that people are controlling is a bottom bit, so it's hard to maybe steer it to the ground, I'm assuming. Look at this woman reaching her hand up. <laughs> oh my god. Look at the phones. Look at the phones. Look at the phones. Look at the phones just staring at this kid. Look. Look at the phones. Look. Look at them. Oh, ah. This kid's going to die. This kid's going to die. They're just looking at him, just staring. Hey, look, there's a little, there's a, there's a, what's that, a spaceman, alien sort of thing on the side there. <laughs> this is probably why people don't like going to hot, hot air balloons, isn't it? This is maybe the reason why people don't like going to hot air balloons because of stuff like this. You just don't want to take the chance. Bloody hell, man. Shocking state of affairs. Um, yeah, but um, get well soon to that kid, isn't it? Three years old, and I'm sure he's gained a. Uh, 
a lot of uh, chest hairs going through that experience. We can say that in it, to say the least. And then another um, pretty hilarious video I found was something that has kind of really struck a nerve with me because I guess I come from the service industry, right? I have um, my most um, experiential, oh yeah, the, the most, the, the the time in my life, I guess, working wise that really benefited me the most was working in the service industry, specifically in retail, right? Um, That's where I kind of learned to grow up. I sort of made a lot of friends. I sort of appreciated um i sort of no i sort of got the respect for what no i don't appreciate yeah i gained a deeper respect for what real hard work is all about um i gained an understanding of how to treat humans or how i wanted to be treated and just generally gained a different appreciation for just you know living and existing and putting a roof over your head in it because i think when you're younger especially with me coming from that kind of creative industry where these people can be a little bit entitled in it they can feel as if like the world kind of owes them things some depending where you go but you know for me when i went to st martin's a lot of people were like that there's a lot of entitlement like you feel as if you're owed this you're owed that because you studied here and because your friend is that person and because you went to this party when really in life you only get out of it what you really put into it right that you only get out of life what the hard work you're willing to kind of commit and really for the most part the people that are the most talented usually aren't the ones that go the furthest it's usually the ones that are dogged that really are able to kind of sink their teeth into something and really commit to learning about it inside and out and just work the hours and, and do the work without any sort of um, recognition or pats on the back and just kind of slog away and eventually when they give give an opportunity they show out um so whenever I encounter somebody working in those environments who was just a pain in the ass or an absolute dickhead or went out of their way to be rude or didn't um, try to be at all understanding or try to kind of, you know, big time you or make you seem as if you're irrelevant or that you're, you're insignificant because you're working in this kind of lowly position or wherever it may be. It really showed me a lot about the person and i think it's a common thing you hear especially amongst women sometimes they'll say oh if you're on a first date with somebody take them to a very public place where you're going to be um surrounded by them you know, specifically a really busy restaurant somewhere like a tj hair friday's or something and then see how they act see how they kind of maneuver see how they kind of interact with people and that will tell you a lot about the person that's very true i think that can be said for even your own friends you know um the way your friends treat a primark retail assistant will say a lot about how they are as a person and um i don't have any patience with people who are rude to service people especially when it comes to working in big faceless corporations such as starbucks right where don't get me wrong i think starbucks for the most part has a pretty good reputation on like some companies for um worker treatment i think most people go in there knowing exactly what the deal is they know what what the kind of level of work they expected to do um the ex yeah the, the expectations are quite clear um you know what you have to do so you kind of bring your a game you do the work and you just leave in it right there's nothing more i guess expected of you in that regard but i guess for the customer's sake of it you have to kind of understand as well for the most part a lot of people working in those kind of places are transient workers they're there for a short period of time pick up a check put some money in their pocket um support themselves through college whatever it may be right there but it's rarely do you meet there's not a lot of people especially in the time that i've worked in retail even in shops in some really popular brands there's a very small percentage i would say maybe 20 percent of people that work there who actually go in there wanting to kind of use that as a way to kind of work their way up to the company like oh i want to be an area manager i want to be a marketing director or something usually people just work those jobs because you know it pays around it's the easiest thing to get at the time it doesn't require much experience right it doesn't require much brain power either so you can kind of do it clock in clock out so there should be an understanding that hey you know this isn't my thing right i'm just a hired help um and also i don't enforce the rules right when you're working in those places you don't you don't um you don't you don't kind of lay out the, re the refund policy right um it's set in stone and kind of passed down to you and you just enact it you're basically like a soldier right you just kind of follow orders you have no say whatsoever you might be able to kind of run things up the chain and kind of report back to your leader but still even your manager in your store they're they're reporting to somebody else who has more authority and more say so in what your shop does especially if you're working for a place like starbucks so when i see a video like this of this guy who purposely went into a starbucks um knowing full well that he can't pay by cash you have to pay by card and they're trying to make some sort of stand as if like you know i will not allow these corporate company to dictate to me how i pay for things right i don't know if he's one of those people that think so if i pay by card they're gonna track me and they're gonna have all my details and data it's just annoying and it's just um a purposeful wind up 
you're purposely going to a store to piss somebody off, to get on their last nerves, to make them agitated, and just to cause them a whole lot of bother. Because at the end of the day, if you watch this video, he doesn't end up paying for it because the, 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 the cashier can't accept his form of payment because they're an accepting card. And he's effectively stealing a bloody panini in Starbucks, right? Um, and causing the employee a whole world of bother, especially when this video goes viral and corporate sees it. And that's the worst thing is all working in retail. You hardly get any support from head office, especially if the response, because usually the response on social media is like, you know, what? It's like, it's like nothing, isn't it, right? It's probably like five or six people complaining, but for the most part, most people that go to that store will know what the rules are and just comply, right? It's no big issue. It's just the, the, it's the noisy minority that make us stink. And unfortunately, most um, corporate companies, especially working in the service industry, they just react to it and they don't want any trouble. They don't want any hassle, so they rather tell you, hey, give that person a refund or issue an apology or give them a voucher. It's always kind of like they just bend their knee as soon as they can, right? They always kind of, they kind of believe that mantra or they die on the mantra of like oh the customer's always right so usually depending on what the crime is sometimes it can come and bite you in the ass right you can stand your ground and think that you're kind of maintaining standards or you're going by the letter of the, of the law or you're going to according to company policy but really no company policy isn't that company policy is that you don't want they don't want people in the store it's going to kick up a fuss they don't want a viral moment they don't want to be embarrassed and they don't want anything that's going to affect essentially their bottom dollar in the stock market and this is kind of one example of somebody kind of exploiting that and really taking a piss and it just driving up the wall man i hate people like this i think it's really really terrible terrible attitude to have paying by cash and our cashless premises here we go so this donkey's already got one of those kind of head cams on knowing full well what he's going to do all right pal much as your ham and cheese panini Can you possibly just scan it and you can tell me how much it is? <laughs> no, no, I don't need to give you my name to buy a panini, my friend. <clears throat> of course, obviously, I don't need to give somebody my name. Already is being a bit obtuse, isn't it? Like, you don't need to be so confrontational. She's just going through the checklist of... It's like, <clears throat> people don't realise, when you work in retail, any sort of service industry job, you, this is not a conversation. This is, these are just kind of actions that you do in order to complete the transaction. Sometimes it's just it's just like an automatic thing that you run down. You know, hi, can I help you? Welcome to the, 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 the. what can I help you? Welcome to the world of blah, blah, blah. What, what can I get your order? It's just a, a random set of commands that you're just running through until it gets to a point where you have to kind of exchange money. This isn't like a conversation. Hey, can I take your name? Oh, I love your hat. This is not a conversation. This is just part of the, of the, of the, of the kind of um the dance you have to do in order to kind of complete the transaction and most customers are aware of this right they're aware they just keep it moving how are you today yeah i'm good no problem you don't just go oh, how are you and like oh actually i've had a horrible day just got fired and my girlfriend dumped me no you know what the game is you just say yeah i'm good fine thank you hope you're good so yeah i'm good as well no problem and you just keep it moving that's what you usually do but this donut doesn't when i'm just looking to buy a panini and i'm looking to walk out do you know what i mean confrontational no cool See this cash, pal? Like, right? this cash is legal tender, yeah? Yeah, but my friend, I'm sorry, that doesn't really matter, right? These pound coins here. Are... My friend, my. And anyone that calls you my friend, my brother, it's always going to be some patronizing dickhead. Legal tender. It's a private business. If they don't want to take cash, they don't need to take cash. And then he's going in there purposely to cause a stir to what? Get a viral moment and post it on one of his stupid, um, what you call it? Uh, libertarian flipping Facebook groups. Legal tender, yeah? As you can see, there is my money. Legal tender, yeah? Correct? It's got such a wine cover. So I'm going to leave you payment, okay? Listen, pal, I'm going to leave you payment, and I've even left you a tip, okay? I've left you a tip for your time and your service to say thank you. So there is my payment. Thank you for the roll. Goodbye. Listen, are you going to... Listen, my friend. Listen, it's okay, but that is my payment, right? And I need to ask, listen, I need to ask you a question, okay? Yeah, listen, my friend. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I appreciate it. I respect you. Exactly. She's even pointing out to him, if you want this penny so bad, you want to pay cash, go to Tesco's. He's pers And this is the issue. Same with the people that go into shops in America and they want to 
not wear a mask, right? I get it. You don't want to wear a mask. It's annoying. It's it's a hassle to wear. It's uncomfortable. It makes your life a living nightmare. I get it. But just go to a place that doesn't that lets you not wear a mask. Find one that does it. Or if just do what normal adults do, suck it up, put it on, get it shopping and leave and take it off straight away like everyone else does. That's what I'm doing at the moment. You're not likely to catch coronavirus walking the streets, right? But you're most likely going to catch it being indoors somewhere. So just put it on for that brief period of time. Why can't this guy just accept the rules of what they are? It's just such a bizarre... I had the same issue with people who go to places like this. And imagine if you like, you know, for instance, you can obviously take your laptop to a place like this, have a coffee and use, use the internet. But you're going to rock up there with your desktop computer, plug it in, not buy any coffee, and then kick up a fuss when the employees tell you, hey, you have to, you have to, you have to pay, you have to, um, pay for some pay for some food or a drink in order to use the internet service that's the same level of annoyance i think with stuff like this because it's just you you are purposely being obtuse you're purposely being obnoxious you're purposely being a dick and essentially making this um innocent sales assistant or cashier or barista whatever they they refer to in starbucks life a living nightmare and again causing them extra stress in a job they don't already want to do and again from the experience i've had most people working in these positions are transient workers people are just coming in to pay their bills and keep it moving there is a small minority of people 20 to say 30 percent of people who are using it as a way to kind of get into the company through the back door and work their way up to go into upper management cool bless those people you identify them quite quickly right it's quite easy to see even management they know who to pick out. okay cool this guy or girl knows what they're doing i'm going to make his manager you know i mean they, no one makes the bloody weekend worker that's 18 who's just working to buy to have money to buy video games you don't make that person a key holder because they're a liability you make the person that's actually turning up on time who's being kind of um proactive who's maybe showing some leadership potential you give that person the keys it's just annoying man but again most people are there to just to work a job and look at the hassle you're causing this person look at the hassle out of panini. my friend listen out of and if you've been to starbucks don't get me wrong, i love starbucks but the panini ain't that great it's not that great it's not worth this it really isn't respect you as a listen my friend i'm gonna say this okay your my company friend, does not decide what legal tender is it's the government who decides this okay listen i need to ask you one question okay because i am not running away i am not stealing from you guys okay are you listen i'm asking you a question can you just tell me yes or no please i'm going to walk out of here just now okay are, are you going to phone the police listen can you just say yes or no are you going to phone the police when i leave payment because if you are i am not running away i will wait here for the police but there is the payment there is imagine the entitlement of a guy that purposely wants to walk into a starbucks refuse um to pay the payment method that they're accepting get the person in as working there doing the, his you know transaction in trouble and then also is willing to wait for the police to come so you're taking the police away from dealing with actual crime preventing murders solving murders preventing people getting raped pe kids getting kidnapped right um violent abuse whatever's going on around in the world you're taking away from that just so they can address your panini gate situation and again, the penny hasn't even been toasted. He's that much of a wally that he walked into a Starbucks to go get a uh, a shelf temperature panini. And that's his kind of stand. That's his political that's his political stance. Yeah, bad boy. What an idiot. The payment. Listen. My friend, there is your payment, okay? And I am gonna leave now. That is my payment. Listen, that is my payment, and I am leaving, okay? Thank you very much. Listen, it's not my friend. You are accusing me of stealing when I have Please left the money on your table. I am not, here. listen, I am not stealing from you. There is my payment and there is a tip for you for your time and That's, your service. Very, Thank you very much. <coughs> I bet this guy's a hell of a, hell of a hang to hang out with, isn't it? You know for sure this guy's the worst person to take on holiday, the worst person to go out on the drinks with after work, right? The kind of person that's going to be counting the amount of things they order in a meal or in a, on a menu when you go to a restaurant, right? Uh, deducting the amount that they have to pay via um, in terms of tips. Uh, and you've got a couple of starters, blah, 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 running away when it's there around and going to the toilet not to, so they don't have to buy the beers. Um, saying they don't want to buy certain things and then when the certain thing arrives then trying to take the certain thing from me if you know what i mean you know this guy's like this says a lot about somebody if you want to really talk at this for sure there's people within your life who'd care for you who'd say you know what he's not the best hang 
he's not the best company going out um for sure he's not the best colleague right oh just painful painful to see and again i, I don't know man maybe it's covid maybe it's everyone just angry and bitter but it's just sad to see us kind of um reducing ourselves to this isn't it we should just be kind of all kind of rallying around each other if anything right you should be going into a place like starbucks and maybe being a little bit um more compassionate for the people that are working behind the tools because you know damn man you have no way of working from home you have to be here so i'm gonna make your life as easy as i can for you make it as painless and pain-free and stress-free as i can because i know it's probably freaking you out just being here right and seeing these many this many um strangers coming in front of you and then you know listening to the 24-hour news cycle telling you that you're gonna die you're gonna die you're gonna die so last thing i want to do is remind you of that right i want to make your experience as effless as i can as painless as i can you go in there and you just, you know, you're like a ninja. You order your finger and you duck. You don't want to cause them any, any sort of grief. But no, some people actually want to up the ante and kind of, you know, really cause people to have a, an, you know, a nervous breakdown. Now, like, what, what a piece of shit. Really, what a piece of shit. Boy, hey, again, what can you do, man? The world is made up of different individuals, isn't it? We all kind of are on this planet to um, <laughs> add to some kind of legacy. I don't know. But hey, what can you do? On the football front, Manchester United, my club that I love dearly, have finally agreed a fee to sign a player of notoriety to add to our illustrious squad and team full of world-class players. Not. But yeah, um, we finally signed somebody. We finally decided to pull our finger out and address a glaring hole within our squad and our team. Don't get me wrong. It's probably not the signing I would have wanted right now. Um, it probably isn't going to be enough if this is the only signing we have, but it's a good step in the right direction. But this has been some interesting blowback or feedback and just conversation around um, the signing potential signing coming up of Donny van der Beek from Ajax may not have agreed a 35.7 million fee for him and the reaction from the fan base of United has been very strange um we're a really odd fan base for a big club um there doesn't seem to be a coherent narrative or a coherent kind of um not coherent there doesn't seem to be a, like a collective view on where the real holes are in our team or who the kind of culprits are for our current demise or who's to kind of blame or yeah there's it, every, it just seems to change depending on who people kind of favor the most in any sort of team or in our team specifically which is very strange I, i've never really seen that before i'm not sure if it's a consequence of us being so um crap over the last decade or so um, I'm not sure if this has always been there or I'm not sure if this is like a con uh, natural reaction to um, so much success in the beginning. But regardless, it's very odd to see us kind of uh, devolve in a way where some people are questioning the validity of signing someone like a Van der Beek. Some people are saying that he's not necessary in our squad. Some people are saying that he's not going to start. What's the point? Some people are saying that he's going to replace Pogba. It's just very, very odd impressions, very odd opinions from a fan base of people that you would expect a little bit better from, especially considering the level of players that we've been used to seeing and the level of winning we've been used to seeing too. But hey, ho, what can you do? So article from The Guardian says, Manchester United have agreed their 35.57 million, 35.5.7 million fees signed Donny van der Beek from Ajax. It says, Manchester United... I've reached an agreement um, from with IX with Donny van der Beek. The fee is 35.7 uh, mil, which is 40 million euros plus add-ons with personal terms agreed with the Netherlands been filled on the deal until 2025. Of course, big up Fabrizio Romano. He broke that story and then all the other English journals jumped on in it and all the Sky Sports Muppets started to act like they were in the know and they're not. Um, van der Beek has attracted interest from several European top clubs, including the uh, um, having excelled in the Dutch side over the past three seasons with Real Madrid and Barcelona among those who have linked uh, with a 23-year-old in recent months. United, however, beating the Spanish clubs to the player, having been in touch with his agent and maintaining strong links to the every division club, thanks to the former goalkeeper Edwin van der Sar, who's Ajax chief executive, the transfer should be completed this week. Van der Beek's um, scored 41 goals in 175 appearances for Ajax first team having joined the club as 11 year old and having previously been tracked by Tottenham there are indeed developments that keep him out of the section the Ajax manager Eric Ten Hag said we will see what happens we will make an announcement as soon as there is some more clarity the fact that he did not play does not indicate a direction the request to not to let him play did not come specifically from one side we do that together agreements have been made about a possible transfer and if that possibility arises you must also cooperate 
And it continues, as a signing of Van der Beek would be a potential creep for Man United and Oligar Solskjaer, who wants to strengthen his midfield options before a new season, talks of a potential signing of Jaden Sancho from Bruce Dortmund, and this to be resolved, while United are also in market for a new centre-back. So, I guess on one side of it, you can be happy if you're a United fan. For myself, I am happy. I think we needed to replace Ander Herrera, who I think Donny Van der Beek is possibly going to fill that position because I think he's versatile in the same way Hando Herrera was, but probably has a lot more technical ability and maybe is a bit more of a skilled football player and all around maybe more talented than Ando Herrera. But that position of Ando Herrera was very vital. I wasn't for himself. I wasn't I wasn't um, one of the people that were happy when we sold him in the first place. I thought we should have gone above and beyond to try and keep him at the club. I think we made a last bid contract uh, renewal to try and get him to stay, but he didn't think the contract was... Um, matched his kind of own impression or value of himself so he kind of went over to PSG and of course you know we saw him play in the Champions League and put in a pretty decent performance for somebody who everyone thinks is a bit shit but I don't really think that I think he's got his strengths and I think when used well he's a great addition to a squad regardless he got sold and I think we were missing that player because you know Scott McTominay bless his effort bless his heart and his dedication but he's not anywhere near the level of Ander Herrera and he's not even come to his full potential of his own playing style wherever that is in himself anyway so I still think we needed a first team senior player to come in who would be a viable option to deputize for the likes of Paul Pogba Bruno whenever they get injured or suspended or just to add a bit of rotation to the side if we want to mix things up even if he wants to play as a deep lining playmaker in the number six role like Matic which I don't think is his strength I do see him more as a box to box player who would maybe deputize for the likes of Pogba and Bruno but I could definitely see um Solskjaer did you know, deciding to put him as a number six. I think having watched a few videos of his him playing, you've seen him wore the number six, you've seen him wear the number eight, number 10 as well. So I'm assuming that versatility is what probably uh, uh, piqued Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's interest. But then on top of that, an issue I have with it is that I still think there are some other issues, other areas of the pitch where we need to address. Left back, we still need a viable option there. I don't, I'm not a believer in Luke Shaw. I think he's been in, at the club enough for me to come to the conclusion that he's never going to be good enough to play for my United. I don't think he's good enough maybe to play for another top side top four side I think his time has been and gone I also don't think Brandon Williams is the option is the answer either I think he's a good backup he's tenacious he's young he's obviously got a lot of potential but at the moment we need a senior member of our squad to fill that position or to kind of give us an outlet at the flanks or at fullback because if we decide that we're going to stick with Aaron Rambisaka long term who isn't the best on the ball but is probably one of the best defenders in the league in his position I think we need to have on the other side an out and out fullback who can attack that flank um, and provide some support for our attacking fours um, especially on the counter and then we also need a centre back we obviously wasted I think a lot of money on Harry Maguire I think Harry Maguire is not an 80 million um, pound defender and under any circumstances but we had to pay the English tax and um, it, it goes to show because we're now having to look for another centre back to complement him I think in another top side if you were playing for you know let's say even if you played for Man City I think um, Maguire's position would be questioned if you play for Man City because his performances have been very questionable um, his turn of pace is not there at all his turning circle is not there and he's a lot slower than what I've imagined him to be actually from the times we saw him play at Leicester maybe Leicester had a different way of playing that maybe made him more compact so he didn't really see deficiencies in pace but I didn't think he was that slow but anyway regardless we need a partner for um, Harry Maguire we also need a, another person to fill in for Matic a specialist in that position as in a, a specialist DM who can deputize maybe a center back when one of our center backs is injured and has that kind of um, defensive knowledge or defensive kind of mindset to want to kind of stay home when everyone else is attacking. I don't think Van der Beek's that option. I still think we need a specialist. And then we also need somebody, in my opinion, who's going to push or maybe compete with Rashford on the right hand side flank, which is if, if whether that's a Sancho or somebody else um, that's maybe not uh, as glitzy as a signing. But we definitely need somebody on the right hand side that um can kind of you know uh, that we can rotate around because as bad as Daniel James has kind of played in the last what since the restart, I still think there's a place for him, especially in the functioning side. You can still put in a Daniel James and maybe with a bit of coaching, whether it's the next manager or this current manager, you could maybe get a lot out of Daniel James. But I think in a current system, um, when you deputize um 
James, when you when you take off Rashford and put on James, the dropping quality is too low. It's too much. So I think if you have somebody else there to fill the flanks, who's not maybe performing as well, or maybe, you know, sorry, isn't maybe as a bigger name, but can perform to that level. I think that would kind of go a long way to kind of push all the players to know that, hey, your spot is up for grabs and also provides a different sort of options going forward. So those two positions, I think, need to be addressed more so in Donny Van and Beek, but I get it. As a player like of, of his of his quality comes to the market, he's versatile. You're gonna have to snap him up. You're gonna have to buy him. You know, it makes complete sense, um, and it definitely does kind of fill a lot of the gaps that we have going forward in our team. Um, then the issue comes with people saying that he's gonna replace Pogba or Bruno, which is funny because Bruno at the moment is like the main United sort of like love child for you know for just reasons. I think he did come in and had that sort of Cantona effect in terms of. He's such a quality, he's such a step above what we already have that he was bound to cause some kind of reaction. But we didn't, you know, I don't think anyone kind of anticipated us getting the, um, that level amount of penalties and him converting them so well and him having such a good impact in the final third and always kind of looking for the adventurous ball, even though you kind of waste the possession a lot. Um, I think that obviously was a good signing in terms of you know that whole cultural reset they keep talking about right that spin they keep giving us i think bruno is a good is a good um, representation of it he was a cultural reset because he um raised everyone's expectation again people then started to kind of talk about hey we need to actually start winning things we need to go for trophies we can't be happy for fourth because we had a bruno fernandez in and it wasn't all on pogba and then um some obviously some fans were like hey we don't need pogba because we got bruno but of course you need as many good players as you can get a hold of and pogba is a once in a generation player too selling a pogba and trying to replace him i don't trust our board i don't trust our scouting department to do that in a competent way so i'd rather keep hold of pogba and i still think he's one of our most important players anyway regardless i think they complement each other really well and if you add another quality defensive midfielder maybe to kind of deputize for matic when he's injured or when he needs rotating you've got a pretty solid def midfield now defense is a bit shaky but i think if you get the midfield sorted out and allow us to kind of create and hold the ball a bit more because I'm not really a fan of the counter attacking football we're playing at the moment. I still think that's a bit myth. I'm not a fan of that way of playing because I think, you know, as soon as somebody defends against us in a low block, we kind of are nullified. I think once we have ball playing uh, midfielders in our midfield and we have competent and really deadly strikers playing up front, we can probably offset the amount of goals we might leak um, with our lack of pace at the back or with our lack of commanding centre backs and whatever they may be. Um, again, I'm happy with the signing. I'm not going to be happy with it. it's the only signing that comes through. We need a lot more players to kind of step in uh, in the senior mantle and kind of take the reins. But, you know, it's a good sign going forward. Again, it's a it's a funny spin from United as poor as per usual. Just when the pressure starts to like hot up and we've seen clubs like Chelsea signing every player that they need in the position that's necessary that they walk in straight into the first team or they go on the bench i think of course the board saw all the kind of negative press that they were going to um generate so they decided to kind of pull a, you know a rab out of the hat and kind of give us find a big but this isn't enough we need more and hopefully we see that in the next couple of weeks oh yeah the season starts soon as well so we need to see that pretty soon mate pretty sharpish um and then of course you've got you know a, a, Another example of why people have stopped watching or listening to kind of like mainstream sports shows such as Sky Sports and listening to stuff like Talk Sport, which I used to actually listen to back in the day a lot. Before fan channels were a thing, I used to be listen I used to listen to Talk Sport all the time. I even had the the kind of digital radio, whatever application on my phone. So you could listen to talk sport all day. Sometimes I'd call in and rant about stuff and never get on and write emails. And it got to a point where I was getting really angry about something. And I think my dad one day just said, hey, what's wrong with you, innit? Don't you, don't you know they're doing this on purpose? They purposely make you want to call in. They basically just, you know, they essentially troll you. This is before I even knew what trolling was, right? Or they had these shock jocks on there, right? Who kind of purposely say the most insane things, get people to call up and respond and argue online. It's just a complete theater. But sometimes they also have people on there who generally have really dumb football opinions. And I guess the fan channels have basically exposed that because what fan channels have shown, especially if you watch people on fan channels who are a bit reasonable, right? I would say like, you know, maybe Ricky from United Sounds a good example. Um, 
maybe Adam McCullough from Shefford Paddock. Probably Housing can be a little bit, you know, he can he can be a little bit weird sometimes. But there are certain fans on certain fan channels who you look at and you think, okay, this guy's a reasonable football fan, a pretty rational one who can kind of give a very well balanced view on his team, um, pros and cons, right? He's not kind of, you know, um weirdly have, you know, rose tinted specs on whenever it comes to everything to do with their team. And they can give some really interesting points of view and it makes you think you know what just because this so-and-so on talk sport played for fucking fulham for 17 million times doesn't make their opinion any more valid than a fan that goes to the game or a fan that just watches streams on the internet right we're all fans of football well most of us anyway which you have to question so many people that are on this um station i don't think they're actually fans of football i think they just you know they just get paid to talk about it so that's what they do but some of the opinions are just complete gobshite like for instance danny murphy here says supposedly because we signed van der beek now pogba's going to be going it's like what to get in the box and score a goal we've seen that he's technically good and he he's an all-round kind of energetic midfielder box-to-box type playing with Fernandez and Pogba do you really think that do you know what I think I th- I think that Pogba could be off that that really that signing to it, me it, says Pogba's off why would you buy a player who's an attacking midfielder and you've already got two attacking midfielders you can't play them all He's, it's, it's idiotic, it doesn't even need a statement, but again, he supports Liverpool. Why would Liverpool be linked to Thiago when they have Fabinho? Because you can't play both of them at the same time. It's the same logic, it's just so brain dead. Um, most top teams have top players to deputise for the top players that might get injured. You, you always need quality. That's the main beef that's happening now with Antonio Conte at Inter Milan, right? He wants to he wants to sign better players to give them more of a chance to be able to win the Serie A. But their owners are like, hey, we've already signed 11. How many more do you need? But he's like, look, I need more. I need more. I need more. I need more. Um, and this idea that somehow Pogba's was going to leave because Danny Van der Beek came in is insane because you only have to look at the transfer market at the moment to know that the players of Pogba's level aren't moving the way that they were moving in the past because there's not a lot of teams out there that can um, pay their wages or justify the transfer fee. Good example, Neymar. Yes, he missed out on the Champions League final, right? But where realistically could he go if he leaves PSG? There's not many places that could afford these wages, so he has to stay until the market maybe improves, until COVID settles and people are back in the stadium so clubs can generate the cash in order to support that transfer, but he's not going anywhere. Gareth Bell is still sitting on the stands in Real Madrid somewhere collecting his 700 and whatever M's weeks. I mean, found he's getting a week. Cristiano Ronaldo is another good option as well. If Even if he does do um, end up not winning the Champions League for a second season at, at Juventus, where else can he legitimately go? There's not a lot of players. There's not a lot of places the top players can go. And Pogba at United, United aren't going to be dumb enough to let him go for less than what they paid. So you're going to have to have a club come in to pay 100 million M's for a player post COVID, right? Not much revenue generated from most of these teams. And with the maybe extra scrutiny of financial fair play. There's not a lot of teams that are gonna do that. And again, we're united. We're already suffering. We're already, you know, prior to Bruno coming in, people were saying that we needed to sign eleven players. Now all of a sudden we sign two and we don't need Pogba anymore. It's like what? And again, these people get paid to have these opinions. But again, I, I'm a big believer in that I'm lots of these people, especially especially some of the pundits and talking heads on these sports shows, most of it's just born out of bitterness. They've got, you know, they were around when football was like, you know, when it was, they, they were probably, let's say, it's, it, could you say you could argue that Dan, Danny Murphy and stuff, they were playing during the era when, you know, it was probably harder to make it, maybe to be successful in the Premier League, right? There's a lot of talent playing around. There's a lot of talent in the Premier League or in Europe, by and large, when Danny Murphy was a, you know, at his pump. And, you know, player of Danny Murphy's quality nowadays would be on easy eight, eight maybe it depend if you pay for my my night. Danny Murphy would definitely be on a hundred grand, right? If Phil Jones can get north of that, then for sure Danny Murphy would be on a hundred grand a week. So there's definitely a bit of jealousy, um, in the idea that you know they were kind of born in the wrong era, and the, these young players who have kind of not achieved you know an inch of what Danny Murphy's achieved are getting paid way more than he is, and they're commanding such uh, you know such high transfer fees, but. Some of their opinions when it comes to football are just so baffling, man. Really, really are baffling. And uh, I don't know. Maybe it's a it's a thing that we should just be all currently aware of. But hey, it is what it is. Then there was this really funny news about him and this kind of follow-up. So this guy, I think, on Twitter called Mike Sington, who's what? What is he? 
He is a senior executive at the NBC Universal and Hollywood's Ultimate Insider. Supposedly leaked some news that there's going to be a new proposed law in the UK that would make celebrities label as edited celebrities. Well, that make celebrities label as edited photos posted on Instagram that are photoshopped. Members of Parliament said edited photos on Instagram are fueling a mental health crisis because they're creating a warped sense of beauty, which is accurate, right? I don't think that's not true. Um, it's a very interesting field again not not being a woman i don't really know what this is about but it's very interesting that <clears throat> for the most part from my experience most women are aware of the women who are public who kind of have had work done it's just a common thing right? i think around the social media water cooler most women know who's got the work done who hasn't had work done it's pretty evident to see they've got their little telltale signs they can see whether or not someone goes dark on social for a bit doesn't post any pictures of themselves maybe they're post-surgery maybe they're post what no non-invasive thing whatever it is they have these little tells right i even find that there's a tell to find that somebody got lipo there's these little puncture marks that they have on the side of their waist or something you can tell somebody got a bit of lipo done duh, 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 duh. so there's things that you can tell so i've always surprised me when people especially use this image of stuff i think that's the kind of controversy was that they use he used the image of chloe kardashian who's kind of been the face of this um edited pictures online um where she kind of edits her pictures so much that you don't even recognize it's her especially it's even more sad i guess for it's it's i guess it's a it's a sadder state of affairs because most people would refer to Kirk Kardashian as being an attractive woman so if, to see somebody of her level of attractiveness result re, uh, you know reduce themselves to editing their pictures this much makes you feel a bit you know ugh, what, whatever she's going through in her head must be horrible right um but we know what the deal is why don't you just come out and say hey this is me I did this I did that work and just keep it moving this idea that some women have to kind of pretend like they didn't edit their pictures or hope no one calls them out on it. It's very strange. And then what ends up happening is that when they get called out on it, they then kind of resort to saying, playing the victim and saying, hey, I'm being bullied. This is why I don't say nothing in the first place. It's just a really weird cyclical thing. Um, but I'd assume most women could know what the issue is, isn't it? And then he followed up and said, hey, I want to apologize to Kirk Kardashian for using her photo. As an example in this tweet, it was a random choice. I could have used any thousands of other people. Hell, I could even use my own, which is, you know, I guess they, they got, if you got reached out and told to kind of take that down but she's a big pep she's a big culprit when it comes to this kind of thing and again it's maybe is sending the wrong message to kids but i don't think kids are that naive i don't think teenagers are that naive i think most teenage girls know that she edits her pictures and she face tunes it and does whatever she does and i think most people are either going to see her an example regardless or just see it as like a woman who's got a lot of kind of um body and self-image issues which you know is again a consequence of what social media right and posting yourself online every single day seeking the approval of strangers is definitely going to cause you to do some very questionable things and again it's just you know it's bizarre because it's not like you know the picture on the left is her looking like an ogre right she still looks very attractive and very appealing to most men and then the right is just another attractive lady too it's just whatever your taste is it's not like one is more attractive than the other i would say i don't know just talking from the outside point of view um but it's just interesting to see members of parliament getting involved and trying to enact a law as if social media isn't built primarily on the idea of faking your lifestyle in some way shape or form what next are they going to um require some people to keep to post their holiday pictures only when they're on holiday some people do that right some people purposely take pictures when they're on holiday bank them or kind of stretch them out over a longer period of time than when they're actually out there even tagging the location so they come back from ibifa and they just start posting you know a series of pictures for a period of like two weeks making it seem as if they're away somewhere else and whenever someone asks them where they are hey are you still out there they won't reply to the message they'll just keep you know they'll just purposely uh be mysterious and aloof people do that all the time what are you gonna do you're gonna you're gonna write write into law that people should only post their pictures on the day that they're on holiday right like this is insane like let people if they want people want to present themselves in another light um if they want to purposely alter their face their face their body whatever they want to do on social media there are no rules it is what it is isn't it like most people are aware that what you see on social isn't always true right especially some of these um karen videos are a good example right not all karen not all karen encounters are karen encounters some encounters are hey 
that person was being a bit of a dick and just because somebody said something in public doesn't make them all make it a Karen. Um, some of the police encounters we're seeing in the States are another good example of it, right? Just because you saw on social media doesn't necessarily tell you the whole entire story. So we know that it's a doctored platform. We know it's a platform that kind of um, taps into people's insecurities, you right? And essentially kind of does damage, especially young women a lot. But writing this into law is just insane and then again using the Kardashians as an example as well it's such a easy it's such a it's such an easy um target right it's a low-hanging fruit and it doesn't really address anything really because again if she wants to tune her face up if she wants to alter the way she looks in order to kind of make her feel more comfortable who are we to say anything about it let the girl live in it it is what it is we know we we know what she actually looks like because you see videos of her um at the moment you can't face tune videos to the same level you can pictures but trust me when they do girls are going to continue doing that as well there's a reason why people catfish because it feels good right it feels good to be like hey i'm getting a sense of validation of people that i didn't think i could get myself because i've altered the way that i look or that I purposely mid-led people this is what it is and this is a, another version of catfishing it's not as bad as pretending you're mixed race when you're white or something but you know it's the same level it's kind of in that same ballpark and it is what it is um yeah odd one that one really odd but hey politicians always know how to use their time wisely don't they eh? not um and then i wanted to update <laughs> this is a very interesting not interesting it's a very funny not funny update um regarding the kyle rittenhouse situation um yeah man my uh, my um my video that i posted about it reacting to the news um got a lot of interesting feedback right and um for the most part it got absolutely damn voted to hell or what no it got um what's it what's the thing called thumbs down to hell right people did not smash that like they smashed the opposite of the like on that video but regardless of that i think the comments were really constructive which was nice to see a lot of people kind of i think saw or kind of understood via my first video regarding the car return situation that i was only reacting based on the information i had at that time and mostly based on the information that i was given or that I listened to via the mainstream media, right? Unfortunately, I kind of got looped into that and kind of got sucked into that orb and didn't really read up on what was going on and really kind of delve in deeply into it. And once I did, man, oh man, did I get it wrong. Man, oh man, did I get it wrong. And this isn't a retraction or a correction. It's just more sort of an update to say that, hey, I got the first bit, I got the first video completely wrong. Um, this idea that somehow he was this neo-nazi that went down to um this area in kenosha to go and you know set the black people straight and spray bullets indiscriminately into crowds and kill many people wasn't true um he obviously went there with some good intentions and unfortunately as does happen in these riots um things just spiraled out of control and before he knew it, he was having to defend himself against a mob so whatever the narrative they were trying to spin on the mainstream media to try and make him seem one way isn't necessarily true and what makes it really difficult as well to kind of to kind of um digest is that it seems like looking at it especially from my my experience of kind of dealing with this online and just reading a story it seems like from the outside looking in especially being a uk guy it seems like the media in the us are purposely causing division amongst the population they're purposely stoking this fire they're purposely making it an us v them situation right um which is really bad because you can you'd, you'd think especially now with covid that there'd be a little bit more of a collective spirit right a bit of like hey let's let's um stop pointing fingers at each other let's stop trying to blame our neighbors for our ills let's stop trying to turn this into a race war and maybe try and unite right so that we can come out of this the other side right because they don't have healthcare in the u.s right people are having to pay out of pocket for this sort of stuff so there's already loads of issues i saw videos of people in certain states queuing up at food banks people that had you know people that weren't necessarily desolate are now having to go to food banks or to kind of feed their children stimulus checks are running out people are not even able to get benefits like people haven't paid rent in months like it's a really um really really bleak situation in america for the most part right people are suffering like suffering for real so to come to this, so to be in that position and then to have the media purposely, um, you know, omit some story, some bits of the story in order to kind of service narrative, in order to get people angry, in order to cause division is just heinous beyond belief. And 
I really don't know what the solution is, and I don't know what they're trying to do because if this is if this was their if this was their way of trying to get people to wake up not to vote for Trump, it's going to have the opposite effect. I think. I think if anything, this um, these riots and um, and this vigilantism and people going you know arming themselves and going to protect their local community because they feel like they have no other option is definitely going to um, is definitely going to make Trump a more viable candidate for re-election as opposed to the opposite i think right for the most part most sensible people be like you know what the, re- the place is already on fire the last thing we need is an entire new regime to come in we might as well just stick with this guy for the most part and let him you know re you know let him kind of reinstate law and order as he keeps writing on all perhaps on twitter and again i don't think trump's dealing with it right i think he is kind of this hands-off approach where he's kind of allowing the country to burn isn't the right way to go about it yes maybe the governors are to blame in the in respective states but jesus christ the media are not helping the situation are they they're not helping at all they purposely made this car in house look like some white nationalist right that went there to purposely go and cause damage when that wasn't a fact at all and um car in house lawyers released a statement basically um talking about such basically outlining exactly what happened and i'll read it to you now so it says here, this is from the National Review, Kyrie Nas Lawyers released a statement. It says, after Carl finished his work that day as a community lifeguard in Kenosha, he was already there, by the way. So they made it seem like, you cross state lines, you cross state lines, he's already there. He went to help clean up some old damage, some damage. So he and a friend went to a public high school to remove graffiti by rioters. Later in the day, they received information about a call uh, for help from a local business owner whose downtown Kenosha auto dealership was largely destroyed by a mob of violence. And you've already seen the videos, right? Um, car lots completely engulfed in flames next day everything is you know a flipping shard and burnt to the ground and it just you know written off completely right like people's businesses like the life you know the blood sweat and tears or something that they've kind of brought up and especially during these times i imagine he probably hasn't sold that many cars during covid and he's completely burning it it's just not on the business owner needed help to protect his what he, what he had left of his life work including two nearby mechanic shop car and a friend armed themselves with rifles due to the deadly violence gripping kenosha and many other cities and headed to the business premises the weapons were in wisconsin and never crossed state lines again something they didn't point out in the media right they made it seem like oh he crossed state lines he wasn't even from there he was there with a friend it's a local it is his local community if your friend lives there that is as much your community as is it, as it is his um the only thing i'm guessing they're going to be able to charge him on or to get they're going to be picking about is maybe the misdemeanor of him being a under 18 and having a rifle right that might be something that he's probably going to get caught up on but this idea that he went there to go and murder um black lives matter protesters is ridiculous if you actually look at what actually happened upon arrival car and others stood guard at the mechanic shop across the auto shop dealership to prevent further damage or destruction late that night subsequent uh substantially uh substantially after the city's 8 p.m curfew expired without consequence the police finally started to attempt to disperse a crowd a group of writers in doing so they maneuvered a mass of individuals down the street towards the auto shops Carl and the others on the premises were very uh, verbally threatened and taunted multiple times as writers passed by but Carl never reacted his intent was not to incite violence but to simply deter the property damage after the crowd passed the premises uh Carl believed the threat of violence had passed. He became increasingly concerned with the injured protesters and bystanders congregated in a nearby gas station with no immediate access to medical assistance to help the law enforcement. Carl headed in that direction with first aid kit, right, to go and help them out. And I think there's another video that shared that's, that basically alleges that the violence started because the protesters came by the auto body shop and I guess they were trying to push a bin that was on fire towards the auto body shop to kind of light up, I'm guessing. And then he had a fire extinguisher and he put out the fire. And I guess that sort of started the altercation, supposedly. I'm not sure that's true. Um, Carl, so he saw out to inj- he saw uh, he saw out injured persons, rendered aid, and tried to guide people to others who could assist to the extent he could. So uh, amid the chaos, but the final time Kyle returned to the gas station and confirmed there was no more injured individuals who need assistance, police had advanced their formation and blocked what would have been his path back to the mechanic shop. Kyle then complied with the police instructions not to go back there. Kyle returned to the gas station, so he kind of, which I guessed what happened, he kind of got split up from his group basically due to the police incompetence car returned to the gas station until he learned of a he, he learned of a need of help protect a second mechanic shop further down the street where property destruction was imminent with no police nearby 
As Carl proceeded towards the second mechanic shop, he was accosted by multiple rioters who recognized that he had been attempting to protect a business mob wanted to destroy. The outraged, uh, he just outraged the rioters and created a mob now determined to hurt Kyle. They began chasing him down. Kyle attempted to get away. He could not do so quickly. Upon the sound of the gunshot behind him, Kyle turned and was immediately faced with an attacker lunging towards him, reaching for his rifle. He reacted instantly and justifiably with his weapon to protect himself, firing and striking the attacker. Kyle stopped to ensure care to the wounded attacker but faced a growing mob. Gesturing towards him, he realized he needed to flee for his safety and his survival. Another attacker shot Kyle from behind as he fled down the street. Kyle turned as a mob pressed in on him and fell to the ground. One attacker kicked Kyle on the ground while he was on the ground. Um, yet another uh, bashed him over the head of a skateboard. Several riders tried to disarm Kyle in a fear for his life and concerned with the crowd would either continue to shoot him or use his weapon against him. Kyle had no choice but to fire multiple rounds towards him and attackers, striking two, including one armed attacker. The rest of the mob began to disperse upon hearing additional gunshots. So, that paints a completely different picture to what you heard in the media and especially what I reacted to in the first video. And it makes you wonder why they decided to charge him with murder in the first place when it was clear it was self-defense. I think they've changed the the, the actual um, charges. I'm sure it's not first degree murder, but the way they were trying to paint it in the media was that it was just that, right? He was alone. He was kind of your um, college shooter, right? Gone rogue, right? Who kind of went to go and put these Black Lives Matter, set these Black Lives Matter protests straight. That wasn't the case. He was tr obviously, he, he went there to go and help right to local community um that oh i kind of have a problem with that i think you should obviously leave that that kind of policing of the neighborhood to the actual police i think of course in certain states um depending on where they lean um well, depending on where they are on the political spectrum it seems like they're using this opportunity as a way to kind of put the middle finger up to trump if you're a blue state you kind of want to take your kind of foot off the pedal and not have the police really lay the law and really kind of maintain law and order and stop anybody from looting. Protesting is fine, but the looting is what's kind of destroying um, all of these neighborhoods, all these communities. And I don't know, man, I just think it's just a, it's just an unfortunate situation because regardless of what happens, this kid's life is effectively being ruined. I don't think you can kind of, I don't know if a kid that's never killed somebody is finally going to be okay because it was self-defense, right? In the midst of a riot, I think once you're alone with your own thoughts, kind of recounting the situation, you're going to regret some of your actions in some respects. Again, he's only protecting himself. I'm sure of that, but <coughs> a kid's life has been ruined. Two families have, you know, had people pass, regardless of what you think of what they did in their prior lives, because I think people are now labeling them as, you know, child molesters and whatever it may be due to their past crimes, but you know it's just unfortunate that they're losing their lives in this sort of instance and again it's just going to cause more and more division as we've seen with the other story in portland with somebody else shooting a supposed trump supporter that's not really been on the news too much i've been keeping an eye on it but you don't really see anybody kind of you know labeling that person as a uh pro as an anti-trump person right because i guess the person that died was a pro-trump person it's just a really really divisive and kind of um bad time i guess in america because the media aren't helping things the guy in the white house ain't helping things either trump because he sees this as an opportunity maybe to kind of um i wouldn't say guarantee re-election but to definitely give the elect the people voting to pose a question really right what do you want do you really want kamala harris and joe biden to step in in the midst of all this going on can you really trust their administration to kind of you know put this put a kind of you know deal with this in the right way maybe kamala harris maybe um considering you know the amount of people that she's locked up over her time but i don't know you can't if you're if you're conservative can you really trust the democrats to really deal with this in a good way i don't think you can um and again i don't think you can categorically go out there and say car in house wasn't defending himself because he clearly was you see the original video and you see um Again, I don't know what the law is in America. I don't know, just because you've got a gun in your hand and somebody tries to punch you, can you shoot them? That seems a bit weird. Again, he wasn't trying to shoot him. The guy was trying to lunge for his gun and shoot him over the head with a plastic bag. You don't have the bag had bricks in it, but the kind of self-defense rules, I'm not sure what, you know, what they can kind of pick apart there, but he didn't cross state lines. Um, the gun was his friends. He was obviously there because the videos of him cleaning up graffiti. 
so he was obviously there to go and help out the community and unfortunately you know as it is with riots things just got out of hand which is why i think by and large people shouldn't be going to regardless if your friend lives there or not you shouldn't be going um armed to go and protect your local businesses unless it's your own business you should only go and protect what is actually yours i think going out there and trying to render support um to other businesses in your community is only going to end this way whether it's going to end in you fatally wounding somebody or you getting fatally wounded yourself because you know both sides you know both sides will have guns uh, for sure most conservatives will have guns more so because you know they're probably more pro guns but in general putting yourself in harm's way for somebody else's business just isn't worth it it really isn't you know everyone's life is ruined just what because of what because of a bloody dumpster fire or something whatever that started the whole beef in the first place it's just so it was just so av avoidable man it really was but again the narrative that the media tried to sell about this car in house guy isn't true man isn't true whatsoever and now they're leaking people are leaking videos of this kid getting to fight in school and hitting a girl what what does that mean does that just it's the same way that you can't say the kill the guy that he killed in the petrol station who might have been a um, you know, who might have had some dubious crimes of his in the past that somehow that justifies him dying in at the hands of a teenager, you know, in the midst of a riot. That doesn't justify either. Same way you can't say, it should, you know, um, Kyrie Tinder should, um, should be in jail because he punched a girl in the back of her head one time during high school. That isn't fair either. Um, I just wish we could deal with these things fairly and kind of judge them as they are. But unfortunately, the, the climate at the moment is not what it is. So, yeah, let me know what you think, man. Like, do you again this is the right car rittenhouse's lawyer statement and um, whether or not that is actually what happened do you believe the story do you think car rittenhouse is going to get strung up um you know will the charges change and if he walks what happens then will there be a full, will there be another riot because he ends up walking because they tried to charge him with something that he actually didn't do he actually def legitimately was defending himself if you actually look at the breakdown of the video see what actually had led up to the actual altercation it did look like he was defending himself right um you know everyone involved in the altercation with him was trying to reach for his gun one person even had a gun themselves so what is he meant to do um and we've seen enough videos of people getting kicked in the head and you know completely unconscious and stomped to the ground i'm sure somebody holding a gun and looking the way that car in houses does there was no way that was going to end well anyway if he didn't shoot them back and try to fight them that one's going to end well for him he was definitely going to get curb stomped and knocked unconscious and maybe even beaten to death do you know what I mean there's no knowing how far that would have gone because he had a gun he represents everything the left hates um yeah unfortunate situation regards let me know what you think in the comments man let me know if you think in comments but i thought i'd provide an update there and don't be afraid to let me know your thoughts and opinions i'm not really that fussed if it gets down burdened and stuff i'd rather be wrong and correct my opinion as it goes on um i'm just learning about this stuff again i'm, I'm from the uk i don't know anything that goes on in the us i'm only listening and reading what i see on the internet and having to piece stuff together you know um and try and come to some sort of uh rational view or reasoned view about what's actually going on there without being a little bit too knee-jerk and reacting to stuff that the you know the lamestream media is putting out for lack of a better term so yeah let me know in the comments down below what you think of that update what else is going on here so we got talked about kyle let's move on to something else here ba, 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 ba. um <laughs> yeah let's talk about bella fawn oh i love this man celebrities always ruin everything and celebrities ruin everything it's just what they do so um i'm sure you guys are aware of the over the weekend um bella fawn supposedly broke the record on only fans uh, when she launched her only fans account um and made i don't know over two million dollars and essentially um, caused a complete uproar within the sex worker community which then led to only fans changing their policy around how they cash out and how limits are basically done and she effectively ruined only fans for actual legitimate sex workers um and it just goes to highlight you know um, what happens when you have celebrities um get involved on platforms or in industries that are predominantly meant to service the I wouldn't say the lowlier types, but the people who generally have no other option but to work on it. Because that's the thing that's really interesting to me with the whole, um, not legitimization or yeah, the kind of legitimization of sex work at the moment in this society, right? 
like you looked at porn and those kind of degenerate activities as places where degenerates existed right it wasn't an avenue for like your local next door mum um to kind of go online and make a couple of grand because she's selling her feet right it, porn was you know mostly um left to the absolute low life of this world right if you went to meet some freaks you went to the porn industry and you know they kind of uh were able to kind of uh keep themselves above you know keep their head above water uh make do what they can use exploit technology in really cool interesting ways and just generally go about things in the right correct way and then kind of you know handle stuff in house whatever it may be and then <clears throat> then somehow it turned into this weird feminist arm where some women who weren't from that sex worker community or who had all the opportunity in life to go any other way apart from sex work or apart from um, working in that industry has suddenly kind of used it as a way to kind of prop up their feminist stance, right? Taking ownership of their body agency and what they do, all this sort of stuff. No one could tell me what I can do. I can wear what I want. I can suck how many dicks I want, blah, 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 blah. And now we're in a situation now where essentially any girl with a smartphone camera who kind of you know is a bit of a freak in their own bedroom can just get it on without that much effort and without um really committing to that degenerate lifestyle from the comfort of their home and essentially just turn it off the moment they step out of their rooms but of course this is only damaging the actual people who actually need a platform like only fans right i'd imagine people who are who can't put their lives at risk by going out and kind of engaging in any kind of um sex work in public i guess in some regards right in then sort of like solicitating work in that regard and better fauna has essentially um exposed that truth in a way that i would have never imagined <laughs> it's just funny to see it so this is sex workers blame better form for changes at only fans that harm their income and this is from the NBC News. It says sex workers and other content creators who use OnlyFans platform to support their livelihoods are blaming actress Bella Fawn for changes in his terms of service that include caps and holds and payments. The changes came after a number of people who were reported to have asked for refunds saying that Fawn charged two hundred dollars for a naked photo in which she was not nude, according to the Changes Times. And guess who reported on the LA Times? Our girl Amy Coffin. Fawn, who posted on her own accounts that she did not offer nudity, told the Times that the screenshots of the supposed offer circuit and social media had been falsified. Yeah, of course you say that. And it's funny too because Bella Fawn is friends with who? Another problematic um, social media icon, Tana Mongo. So it does make sense, isn't it? Like, you know, birds that flock together and all that malarkey. It continues, says, um, content creators say OnlyFans subsequently imposed payment caps of $50 on pay-per-view posts and a hold on payments that would force... Um, some international creators to wait 30 days to receive their money so she went in there made her two mil um they changed the caps and now some users uh, or some content creators have to wait a whole month to get their money because they're having to pay out refunds on bella's bella phones uh for bella phones uh dubious actions which is funny because i think that the, you know some of these sex workers are again on their high horse but i've have heard stories of some people you know selling a bluff like i mentioned before that ruby rose did it right ruby rose posted a picture on her instagram stories somehow suggesting that her and her friend were naked and then you had to go on only fans to unlock it and we went only fans it wasn't naked it was just her in a bra and bikini top right it was just like come on man on lingerie so i think that's a common hustle that women do on those platforms and by and large i think you know if you're a mark or if you're a whale you know you're going to get duped here and there along the way right it's kind of the game you're playing right it's kind of this kind of this dance right you've got the money they've got the goods so you have this kind of weird dance and you're kind of having to you know exploit each other in some way shape or form but you can't be saying you're not gonna you're gonna upload nudes for 200 dollars and then not send nudes you know what i mean that's 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 taking it too far users who earn a significant part of their income on early fans blame phone for the new policies which they say limit their ability to make money <laughs> phone 22 a former disney time made one million in her first day on service according to variety and again she doesn't need this i shouldn't say this right because we don't know what our finances are she could be in a position where she needs to do this that's why she resorted to it but if ever there was a person that didn't need this kind of hassle or attention it was her i guess in that regard and maybe even in terms of kind of reinventing her look and what she's about because i thought there was a period in time where bella form was trying to get away from being this kind of like 
um i um vision of sex or something right she was trying to step away from that but i guess no maybe she's just leaning into it because being 22 and just being known for being hot and not actually being a good actress is maybe not the way you want to go about things because it does limit the scope of stuff that you can do in it um but hey what do i know OnlyFans said in a statement that the changes were not based on one user and said that it aims to provide the best platform possible for its community. It says the transaction limits are set to help prevent um, overspending and allow our users to continue to use the site safely. Yeah, right. It says we value all the feedback received things, um, since this change was implemented and we'll continue to review these limits. Um, the form posted a series of tweets Saturday saying that she apologized if she had affected sex workers' ability to make money. She says she intended to only normalize sex work and intends to speak with OnlyFans about the new supervision restrictions. And and again the entitlement of celebrities as if as if people are waiting for bella fawn to normalize sex work people just normalize it already people are spending their hard-earned money you know subscribing to certain people on that platform to get pictures which i can never understand right paying money for jpegs is nuts uh let alone paying money for mp4 files but regardless you know if they want to spend their money on those kind of things if people are providing that service do what you want to do but to suggest that somehow Bella Fawn is going to be the one to normalize sex work is insane. Um, she said, I went to bring attention to the site. The more people on the site, the more likely a chance to normalize the stigma. It's like, what? And in trying to do this, I hurt you. I risked my career a few times to remove the stigma behind sex work and porn and natural hate towards people. Stew. What is she talking about? Um, and it continues that Fawn told Paper Magazine that she was making a documentary about her experience. This is the best bit on OnlyFans with Sean Baker, writer and director of the critically acclaimed films The Frodo Project and Tangerine, which I've watched. Baker denied any involvement in the statement on Friday, claiming that he had only discussed the possible collaboration with Fawn in the far future and had advised her to consult with sex workers first. So hypothetically or allegedly, I'm assuming they were probably doing a couple of lines in a, a beverly hills a mansion somewhere talking as people do when they're high changing ideas what can we do he suggested they do some project with only fans and then she latched onto it and then when she got sober and actually went to something only fans she went to legitimize her project by attaching this documentary film towards it to attach it towards it to, to make it seem as if like she was raising funds for the film or to give back to community it's like no it wasn't it was always a it was always a ploy to get more money in your bank account it was always a ploy to maybe increase your brand awareness whatever it is but it was never to normalize sex work like as if as if that is amazing. He's like, I have no involvement with this. He says, I'm an ally and I've literally devoted my career to tell stories that remove stigma and normalize lifestyles that are under attack, Baker said. I would never do anything that could possibly hurt the community. He absolutely disavowed her in the best terms. He says, the OnlyFans is not the only platform for sex workers given a wide range of... It's, only, it's, not, it's not only a platform for sex workers given a wide range of creators an opportunity to sell content to subscribers. It also has gained a reputation of offering a safe way for sex workers to earn money. Of course, critics who blame Bella Fawn for new policies have accused her of scamming her subscribers and her to creators who use the platform as a primary source of income. She hasn't really... She hasn't really... Um, she hasn't... Uh, her she's basically exposed a scam that scam was always running on there anyway it's just funny that somebody of her level would do that <laughs> i finally got caught up on a better phone only fans and white disney star and still working actually has fucked up a platform that allows sex workers to earn safely with autonomy is basically the snapshot of worldwide co-opting co spaces of white women co-opting spaces for marginalized in the name of empowerment of course it's just funny she tries to be an ally and essentially is the complete opposite of an ally other users who have links to only fans accounts identify identify as sex workers are also respond to twitter saying how frustrated they were with phone joining the site and potentially inspiring massive changes when so many people in the community rely on it she says here yeah, the issue with Bella Fawn is benefiting from OnlyFans is that she's not a sex worker and doesn't need to turn to the site to afford to live when so many of us rely on the money and she's totally fucked us for clout for her shit new movie about sex work when she has no effing idea. <laughs> oh, I love it. Another user who goes by username uh, Miss uh, Carlette something exo asserted that thousands might suffer from what many I see as repercussions of Fawn's behavior said I'm sure she's a nice lady but that doesn't take away from the fact that millions of us are now screwed mothers who relied on that one week pay to feed their kids dads making a few extra money for their family now due to her scam mistake thousands will suffer oh I just love it it's just such a this is such representative of you know what goes on in most corporations and that they come in and just absolutely fuck up everything for everybody else rebecca madison 
um, a sex worker from Vancouver, British Columbia, who was worked in the industry for the past 15 years, said in, she earns all her income from only found during the coronavirus pandemic after she lost her traditional job. She's also been able to live comfortably on her sole income from the site so far. I wonder what goes on in a woman's mind to go from like traditional job to straight to sex work. That's a big leap, isn't it? There must be some interest in it already, isn't it? It's not something that everyone would be able to do. Even if you're, because I wouldn't say it's a, promiscuous thing it's not like a confidence thing either it's just like a, a thing in your head right i'd imagine that's a big leap but anyway oh i love it i absolutely love it man i really really do love it it's such an interesting story um to see how she's messed it up for everybody else <laughs> especially when you consider that she was at the i don't know it's, didn't wasn't better phone one of the victims of the whole fappening stuff Did, weren't, didn't a lot of her nudes get leaked anyway so I, I, I'm not even sure why there's a demand for it. I'm not sure why she do even want to put herself in that position again because her nudes got leaked. I'm sure it was better for one um, to an extent where everyone basically saw her for JJ and shit. So why would you want to exp exploit yourself again in that way? Maybe it kind of goes to show that maybe the first leak was allegedly manufactured and an inside job. We don't know, but it's just funny that she tried to legitimize it with the movie and the guy that was supposedly producing it said nah 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 don't include me in your shit i don't want to be anywhere any part of it but yeah um let me know what your thoughts are man did bella Fawn ruin sex work for everybody on only fans or was only fans always doomed um you know because it is what it is <laughs> um because i'm a big believer that that scam already existed i think people are doing that anyway people were definitely selling people are definitely overselling and under delivering on what they were offering i'm sure some people were offering the goods because i'm because there's a there's actually an instagram account i remember stumbling across where this guy goes around reviewing um sex workers um only fans accounts and giving them a rating out of 10 and shit as if what they offer and value for money and stuff so um i'm sure there's a community of reviewers out there that do that but i do think there's some people out there that are kind of you know finagling the game and unfortunately better form just blew up everyone's spot just kind of baited up the whole thing um I, I don't know again people that are paying for this stuff is insane man again it's just you would never have guessed it in the technology age that we live in at the moment that people would actually be paying or subscribing to porn in that way like it's just wild isn't it i think people already are a bit mad or a bit nuts or a bit kind of freaked out when people say they've got like you you know porn up premium accounts and stuff so imagine paying for a subscription to you know to see a 22 year old former disney star supposed to be getting nude it's like you could definitely be spending your money on other things but you know a man and their money in it easily parted easily parted you know what i think that might be it for now the excellent thing show episode number three six four i think that was Thank you so much for tuning in as per usual if it's your first time listening and watching the show make sure you smash that like button hit subscribe and leave me in a comment down below if you're listening via the podcast app please leave me a five star review and share the show with your friends download it wherever you are share 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 and if you want to support the show via patreon please do via the link down below patreon.com for us agostino that's patreon.com for us a-g-o-s-t-i-n-h-o support the show for as little as one dollar per month and you get the entire arsenal the full audio library of my all my podcasts as well as this podcast in full hd a couple of days before everybody else gets it online so definitely check that out if you can at patreon.com for slash agostino until then see you guys very very soon take care peace